Jessica turned her head, stared down into the basin at the golden shadows, the purple shadows, the vibrations of dust mote air across the lip of their cave. Her mind was filled suddenly with feline prudence. She knew the cant of the Missionaria Protectiva, knew how to adapt the techniques of legend and fear and hope to her emergency needs. But she sensed wild changes here, as though someone had been in among these Fremen and capitalized on the Missionaria Protectiva's imprint. The Sayadina, meaning friend of God, hold a special place of honor among the Fremen people of Arrakis. This female religious order maintains the strength of God among their tribes through their wisdom and teachings. Interestingly, their chief priestesses bear the title of Reverend Mother, a Bene Gesserit rank. Despite the obvious similarities between the Bene Gesserit and the Fremen Saedina, there are several wild, dramatic differences between them. In this video, I'd like to examine the secretive and mysterious religious order of the Fremen, their wild Reverend Mothers, and the Bene Gesserit's ancient influence upon it. Spoiler warning if you are unfamiliar with Frank Herbert's Dune series. The Fremen are known as a fierce and mysterious people who over thousands of years have adapted to live amid the hostile desert environment of Arrakis, also known as Dune. The intimate details of their society are largely kept secret from the Imperium, who generally look down upon them at best or hunt them for sport at worst. Over the long passage of time, the Fremen religion has gone through quite an extensive evolution. Thousands of years before the events of Dune, their ancestors practiced a religion largely based on the Sunni branch of Islam with Zen Buddhist influences. Their ancestors had grown soft on an easy planet and as such fell victim to enslavement by Imperial raiders. They became known as Sensuni Wanderers as they fled their persecutors, inhabiting several different worlds and becoming increasingly hardened as a people. Their history, marked by flight and death, no doubt helped prepare them for the dangers they would come to face on the last stop of their pilgrimage, the desert world Arrakis. Though they found freedom, they'd also face death on a daily basis in the midst of an environment so extreme they were forced to adapt or risk dying off altogether. In a rebirth of sorts, the Fremen met the challenge by adhering strictly to the rules of desert survival. Having abandoned much of the pacifism inherent in Zen Sunni teachings, their priestesses, the Saedina, proved crucial in preserving and passing on what was left of their history and traditions. Sayadina to Sayadina, by word of mouth, the thread of history was passed. The Book of Krios and the sayings of Zensuni philosophers guided them as a people. Though much of their ancestors' culture became lost or distorted over many generations, their spirituality continued to deepen and evolve. After thousands of years on Arrakis, their survival came to dominate every aspect of their lives. Superstitious practices became a part of their society. Water became sacred, with waste viewed as a serious sin. Survival rituals turned into religious customs, and the dominant form of life on Arrakis, the giant sandworm, came to be adopted into their faith as Shai Hulud, the awe-inspiring life form they viewed as the physical manifestation of the god from their original Zen Sunni religion. Though their beliefs were strongly entrenched into their society, adaptation and survival were just as ingrained into their culture, and as such, their customs and rituals evolved and adapted as well. For example, virgin sacrifices to Shai Hulud that were once a common practice had been done away with, as well as blood sacrifices, which saw their return during Muad'Dib's Jihad along with other ancient rites. The Fremen and their Sayadina were also not immune to outside influence. Their religion underwent drastic changes due to the manipulative efforts of the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood. The Missionaria Protectiva, responsible for sowing myths, superstitions, and prophecies on primitive worlds, did so not only as part of their grand plan to control humanity's destiny, but in the short term, they also served as safety valves for a Bene Gesserit. 
By assuming certain roles within the prophecies themselves, a Bene Gesserit could infiltrate a society and achieve a protected status and measure of authority depending on how dangerous an environment was and the level of control needed to accomplish her goals. This safety valve is exactly what the Bene Gesserit concubine to Duke Leto Atreides, Lady Jessica, took advantage of in order to ensure the survival of herself and her son, Paul. As the story of Dune unfolds, we gradually learn more about the Fremen culture and we come to understand just how deeply the sisterhood has impacted the religion of the local Fremen population of Arrakis. Among the Fremen, several prophecies and legends tell of a prophet from off-world, a son of a Bene Gesserit and savior who would lead them to paradise. This prophecy had been maintained for many generations as it was passed on and perpetuated through the teachings of the Saedinas and Reverend Mothers. Lady Jessica was well aware of the Bene Gesserit's influence on this world, recognizing certain beliefs as part of their religious engineering initiative. Upon meeting the Fremen of Siech Tabur in the open desert, Jessica was able to gain entry into the tribe as she was viewed by the Fremen first as a weirding woman and then as a Saedina. Through Jessica's experiences on the deadly desert world, we come to understand that ancient Bene Gesserit Reverend Mothers actually integrated themselves into the Fremen Saedina priesthood, no doubt adding to the legitimacy of the prophecies they seeded. In fact, it's apparent the Fremen people were so heavily imprinted with the Bene Gesserit soothsay, they even called their chief priestesses Reverend Mothers. Each Fremen Siach has at least one Saedina, a wise woman who can serve as spiritual leader, but a tribe is considered to be at its full strength with the presence of a Reverend Mother. And similar to the spice agony rituals performed by members of the Bene Gesserit, any Fremen Saedina appointed to become a Reverend Mother would need to undergo the Water of Life ceremony, wherein she would ingest a powerful poison and by means of her supreme powers of internal organic chemical control, she would then render the lethal substance harmless. For a Saedina, this essential and deadly rite is usually performed when a Reverend Mother has neared the end of her life and as part of the ceremony, must impart all of her knowledge of the past that she has inherited onto the next Saedina who would take her place. When this ritual was incorporated into Fremen religious practices, the Saedina had a much more reliable and extensively detailed way of imparting their knowledge to the next generation. The collective knowledge of the previous Reverend Mothers would be passed on to the next, with each adding their own memories and lived experiences, so that the thread of history was preserved and the spiritual strength of the tribe was maintained. After participating in the Water of Life ceremony and successfully rendering the poison to be non-lethal, the Lady Jessica became a full-fledged Reverend Mother, unlocking her female ancestral memories within her but with the addition of being filled with the vast history of all prior Fremen Reverend Mothers. In completing the rite, Lady Jessica successfully replaced the wild Reverend Mother Romalo, thus becoming a highly respected spiritual leader among the Fremen. It was also during this sacred ritual that the Fremen warrior girl Cheney was herself consecrated as a Saedina, able to take Jessica's place were she not to survive. The role of the Saedinas and Reverend Mothers as keepers of the religious flame of the Fremen saw its biggest impact with the arrival of Moadib, Paul Atreides. His rise to imperial dominance served as the catalyst for the unleashing of an unstoppable bloody jihad across the known universe, wherein the Fremen would forcibly spread their beliefs upon the masses. Over time, much of the Fremen's imprint on the galaxy faded with the tyrannical rise of the God Emperor, and thereafter only a few individuals strove to maintain and adhere to the old Fremen attitudes and traditions. Overall, the spiritual knowledge and guidance provided by the women who served as the Fremen's religious leaders was largely responsible for the fervor that moved their people to upheave and fundamentally transform the power structure of the known universe. To their detriment, this side effect of religious engineering was a factor that the Bene Gesserit failed to account for. 
Ultimately, it can be said that the Saedinas were used by Frank Herbert as a part of a larger thematic warning against the use of religion as a tool to manipulate and control societies and populations. But I'm curious to know what you think of the Fremen's religious order. Is there a particular aspect of their religion or the role of their spiritual leaders that interests you? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.